How many people brought your Bibles or your iPads or your telephones? I don't know, whatever you use for scripture. Good. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you got your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Galatians, chapter 3. It's the book of Galatians, not the book of relations. But the book of Galatians. And uh, I'm going to deal with some different things. I'm going to kind of be more, um, ooh, I would say authoritative this morning in my role as a minister of the gospel. I want to talk today about the gospel of no difference. Now, I'm going to explain that in just a minute. The gospel of no difference. Preaching should never supersede thought. It should make you think. So you that are watching all over the world, call them and get on, tell them to get online, jdm.org, wherever they're watching this, or is it on Facebook? I don't know how they do all that kind of stuff. You need to, you're going to learn some things today. I'll be able to, you see, when I'm able to come to come to church, I can preach some revelations that I can't do on the road. Because that is the evangelistic part of our ministry out there to save people, minister people, and things of that nature. So preaching should never supersede thought. It should make you think. And if it's not making you think, then you're not hearing preaching. You're not hearing teaching. These things are not getting inside of you. So once they get inside of you, then they come out of you in such a wonderful way. Now, the Bible is a Bible. I said this at the Believers Convention. I'll say it again. The Bible is a book of large conceptions. It's, it's, it's completely revelational, if that's such a word. If not, I'll just coin the thing. And out of that revelation comes revolution. In other words, it changes things. Shows people the power they have. So I'm going to talk about things. I'm going to talk about colored people. That includes white people. Because we're all colored. There ain't nobody with no color because we'd be invisible if we were. That doesn't make no sense to me. And I'm going to deal with some things, and I'm going to show you how God dealt with this. And I, and I want you to write this statement down, and I've said it before. Everything in the Bible is truthfully stated. But not everything in the Bible is a statement of truth. And you got to know the difference. Everything in the Bible is truthfully stated, recorded. But not everything in the Bible is a statement of truth because men and women who are walking through this in that first century were moved by the way they were raised, even though God was speaking through them. So I'm going to say some things that are going to make you think. <clears throat> some of you may get mad, but after you think and meditate on it, you're going to say, Jesse's right. And I want you to see this. The gospel of no difference, or you could entitle it the gospel of democracy. Either way, Paul the apostle is writing to the church of Galatia. It's one of his finer epistles. And, he, and I want to start reading with verse 26. He's talking about sons and heirs. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Notice that. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. So we're more than a creation. We're family. We're more than the serpents, the cherubims, the archangels. We literally have the DNA of God in us because of what Jesus did. That's why he said, be ye therefore imitators of God. Let me read that scripture again, verse 26 of Galatians 3. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Verse 28, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. Underline that verse of Scripture. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed Amen. and heirs according to the promise. Or in other words, the heritage of Abraham belongs to each and every one of you who are born again in Christ. That's spiritual, physical, and financial. I'm going to say to you what I said to the people at the Believers Convention. All of you ought to be rich. Amen. Somebody should have shouted there. Amen. Why is that not happening? 
Now, I, I use that because that's what catches everybody's attention. Money. And you live in an economic world. Jesus said, the poor you're going to have what you always. Why? There's a reason for that also. I believe it's Deuteronomy 15, verse 4. He said, when there's no more poor among you. He, heaven has no poverty because it's a curse. You shouldn't have it here. In any way, shape, or form. Spiritual, physical, and financial. Poverty of spirit is worse than poverty of money. Now, I want you to see something here. So whatever Abraham is, is what you are. You are the seed of Abraham. And if Abraham was very rich, everybody say very rich, very in rich. cattle, silver, and gold, then you should be very rich in substance, material, spiritual, physical, financial, every area of it. That's going to make some people mad. But if you turn this off, you're going to lose what God wants to help you with today. See, the gospel of no difference. There's neither Jew nor Greek. Oh. There's the gospel of democracy. Or the gospel of no difference. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither slave nor free. That's verse 28. There's neither male nor female. Now, I'm going to get on that after a while. For you are one in Christ Jesus. Amen. Truthfully stated. And a statement of truth. But was it implied? Was it put forth? Well, in private circles, it was. But not in church circles. Even till today. We have separations. So let's go back for a few minutes. And realize the world that Paul the Apostle is living in. He's a first century Jew. Some say he was married, some say he wasn't. What made him say what he says? Because, see, God records things that people did that were wrong, and some people preached the wrong as right. It was truthfully stated, but not a statement of truth. You see what I'm saying? But he lets you know that they're just like you are, working out their salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. So let's find out what kind of world Paul grew up in. Well, he was a student, a teacher. He traveled all the time, but he never had a home. He'd been in many houses, but he never had a house. He was always gone. He was a Pharisee of the tribe of Benjamin. Yet he thought in ways, even before he came to the knowledge of God, that a lot of people did not think of. So he was actually motivated by his environment. And environment will motivate you. So let's talk about the kind of world that Paul was born into. Now watch it. In the Roman world, you either were a citizen of Rome or an enemy. If you were a foreigner, <clears throat> you were considered an enemy. Rome controlled everything through military might and power. And Paul was born in that Roman world. I want you to see this. I'm talking about the gospel of no difference. The gospel of democracy. Call it what you want. No Jew, no Greek, none of that. Look at that. I want to read that verse 28. Neither Jew nor Greek, neither slave nor free. Even though they were Jews, they were Greeks, they were slaves, they were free. There's neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. That was the revelation God gave Paul. So Paul, in the Roman world, you either were a citizen of Rome, which he was, or you were an enemy, foreign or whatever. Now, on the other part of the world was the Greek world. Now, the Greeks were um, classy people. Yet, they, they watch the world that Paul deals with, and yet the Greek language was used quite often more than the Hebrew language. Of that day. In the Greek world, you were, uh, you were artistic. You were philosophical. You were like a Socrates. But in the Greek world, everybody else but the Greeks were barbarians. So you didn't have much of a chance. In the Roman world, you're an enemy. In the Greek world, you're a barbarian. All done by people. That's what Paul is saying, that we're all one in Christ. That that was all washed away. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? In religion, there was just two sides. There was the Jew, which was God's chosen people, the children of Abraham, and everybody else was Gentile dogs. Notice that. This is the world that he was born in. If you was a Jew, you had it. You were the ch children of Abraham. You were God's chosen. But everybody else is a dog. Who, who, who let the dog out? <laughs> Gentile. No, 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 no. Sir. Uh -uh. You can't get into this world. Notice how tight down people are bound until Paul began the priest of revelation of in Christ. Notice that in religion. One or the other, buddy. All women were inferior. The Jewish woman had a little bit more freedom, but not much. In fact, in the synagogue, they would say, oh, God, thank you, the men, that you did not make me a woman. Who? But he said, male or female, there's neither. So why did Paul say when a woman come into church, you cover your head and you shut your mouth. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. He thinks of them, not in private circles. Now, I'm getting ahead of myself here in a minute, but I'll just say that. He wants to stop a revolution because he adopted women into his work who did great jobs. But you can imagine what the rabbis would have thought about that. But... In the church world, he would say, okay, cover your head and shut your mouth. And if you need anything, you ask your husband. And whatever he says you do. Okay, I'm opening up this can right now. Hang on. <laughs> Look at these women. Come on, man. Come on. All right. So watch this. And then listen to this. He doesn't really care about the, the reputation of the woman. She's inferior. According to this world they're living in. Look at this. Think about this now. This great apostle. But he's trying to work it through there. But because, see, he is, he's been motivated by the world that he's in, even though he's receiving great revelation from God Almighty. So he, he, he wants to impact the world, but he doesn't know exactly who. Because you see, he never could think that slavery would be abolished. Now, he could do it in Christ. The slave is free. The master is free. He could say there's neither male nor female. He could say it in private. But, oh, he never thought that a woman could ever have authority like a man. That's still today. Some people call it a man's world. Is it? No. No. Let me say here, then I'm going to get into this. Most of the people were slaves, which were, what were slaves? Tools of production. That's it. Jesus was not the poor man's friend. These are not points. I'm just telling you, I'm going to get into the points in a minute. Jesus was not the poor man's friend or the rich man's friend. He was the friend of man Amen. because he was the son of man. See, that's why the disciples couldn't figure out why would he talk to a woman at the well in Samaria. She's below him. She's inferior. You don't talk to her. In fact, you discuss nothing with your wife. You discuss it among men. Socrates one time said, if you were talking to someone, who do you tell more than anybody else? They said, we talk to other men. What he was trying to get them to understand was you should be talking to your wife. But no one had the concept that a woman could be in politics, could vote. They were tools of production. Just like the slave. Oh, y'all are interested in it. Look at that. Yeah, you never, so I thought I'd just give you some of my revelation here. <laughs> that I love this. So I said all that. I'm going to run over it real quick. In the Roman world, you were either a citizen of Rome or a foreigner. And if you were a foreigner, you were an enemy. In the Greek world, 
you, you were artistic and philosophical, but everybody else was barbarians. In religion, there was the Jew, God's chosen people, children of Abraham. And the others are Gentile dog, everybody Gentiles. All women were inferior. Most were slaves, tools of production, women and slaves. Because why? No one ever thought that slavery could be abolished. Yet God designed the church to abolish slavery. But they were nervous about it because they were afraid to cause a revolution. So they were trying to slide this stuff out. But what about the people that had to go through that? Jesus was not the poor man's friend. Notice how he, he, he ate with rich publicans and he walked, walked with Pharisees and then he talked to women. Oh! He uplifted. He was not the rich man's friend. He was the friend of man or mankind because he was the son of man. Now, are you ready? The gospel of it, of no difference or the gospel of democracy. I'm going to read verse 28 again. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither slave nor free. There's neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. Write this down. The democracy of the gospel has no distinctions. All, all differences in the gospel harmonize. In other words, when you have perfect harmony, it sounds like one voice in three different ways or eight different ways, depending on what, how many, if you're going to do first soprano, second soprano, first alto, second alto, first tenor, second tenor, baritone, bass. And when you harmonize correctly, you becomes one voice. So the democracy of the gospel, the, the, the gospel of no difference, has no distinctions. All differences harmonize, and all hearts become united, which means we shouldn't be having all this trouble we're having today because we've been equal for over 2,000 years because of in Christ, an heir, Completely equal in every area. But yet, why would this great apostle of authority would say, woman, when you come into church, cover your head and shut your mouth. Be silent. He knew there was neither male nor female. Paul made a mistake. Even though they were beating him up anyway, he, he should have pushed that out. But he did it in private circles, Aquila, Priscilla. He believed that. He, he didn't believe women were inferior. But when he got into the church, he actually did the same thing Peter did in reverse. Peter went with the Jews and Paul was stood in publicly. But when he got around there, he said, okay, well, it is. but just in a different manner. So he wouldn't call a revolution. He's because these rabbis were just freaking out because of the women that he would use. Remember, they would pray this prayer in the synagogue, oh God, thank you for not making me a woman. Isn't that the most insane thing you ever heard of? Do you see how free Jesus did, brought freedom to the world? You never see him putting down a woman. You never see him putting down a slave. You never see him putting, he is a friend to all. Think about that for a minute. So the democracy or the gospel of no difference has no distinction. All differences harmonize and all hearts become united. Why is that? Write this down. We're made up of organic unity. We're made up of organic unity because we're one. Out of that unity comes favor, tenderness, discipline, training, and conformity. See, now when you understand that, you don't see Jew, Greek, slave, master, male, female, color. I'm going to deal with that after a while. We are made up of organic unity. Out of that unity comes favor. Ooh, I love the favor of God. I call it the fog, favor of God. Tenderness. You got to learn to be tender. Discipline, love in its purest form is discipline. Training, you got to be trained 
And then out of all that comes conformity. You conform to an heir with the Father and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, when you understand that, that's walking in love in its purest form. You don't see difference. Why do you believe your wife can pastor this church? Because she's not a woman. She's not. I'm not a man. I'm an heir and a joint heir, which means authority and power is given the way God wants to do it. You're still thinking first century Judaism. You have not progressed. Ooh, this is good. You see, let me say it again, we are made up of organic unity. Out of that unity comes favor. Oh, the favor of God. Tenderness, discipline, training, and conformity. Why is that? We are free people. We are free people and should be enjoying the confidence of our sonship. So when I talk, the most private things I talk to about is to Kathy, which in the first century world, oh, no, no, you don't do that. In fact, you don't even sit together. You got one on one side, one on the other side. There are some churches today that have two or three platforms and pulpits, but the woman cannot be at the top pulpit simply because she's a woman. Mm. See, we are free people and should be, write this down, we, sh we are free people and should be enjoying the confidence of our sonship. Now, people get mad at me because I enjoy the confidence of my sonship. I know in whom I have believed. So when I look at you, and I don't see male or female. I don't see Jew or Greek, bond or free. I see an heir. Now, to give them credit, they never could, Paul never thought that a slavery would be abolished. So he tells Onemus, he said, listen, now you go, you know, you're, you're, listen I'm, you know, be a good slave. Even though he didn't believe that. But he thought, but there's just no way. Be a good woman. Cover your head and shut your mouth. I'm your husband. Even though he didn't believe that. He did believe it, but he, he, he couldn't express it because of the environment. There's something else people don't seem to understand. God didn't tell Abraham to kill Isaac. You see, Abraham couldn't figure out why God would say, take your son, your only son, and offer him up for a sacrifice. He knew that was heathen. Or heathenistic, call it what you want. He knew that uh, uh, those, those, like Dagon and all these crazy gods, they would burn their children as a sacrifice to them. But see, because of his environment in the Chaldees, or the Ur of the Chaldees, he's thinking, I got to kill, oh Lord, I got to kill Isaac. Oh, y all, y all, I got you, now listen. No, God didn't tell him to kill him, he said, offer him. All I want you to do is offer him, not kill him, because there's a ram in the thicket here. Yeah. Y'all understand what I'm saying? But because the way Abraham is raised, his environment motivates his mind. Just like Paul's, they never thought that slavery would be abolished. And it was not abolished till the 1800s. And yet some of it is still going on today in some countries. Hmm. When God designed the church to make them stand up and say there's neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, male or female. In other words, we're all one in Christ Jesus. Now that's equality at its best. You see, write this down, when you draw near to Christ, he brings you near to each other. So when you draw near to Christ, he brings you near to each other. That is Christianity at its best. See, Paul loved being around Aquila and Priscilla. And some of the women, I mean, it's amazing. Even today, 
Women can go overseas and do the most phenomenal, fantastic works you've ever seen in the body of Christ, yet they can't pastor. Why? They got the same, they're still first century Judaism. They're misunderstanding what God is saying here. If you neither male nor female, then you're not. If you eat a Jew, then, if, then, then, if you want in Christ, that's it. There's no other, don't complicate that. You see. So what I do when I hear a woman preach instead of saying, why well, that woman trying to teach me something? I'm enjoying my sonship. I'm going to enjoy what she says because what she says is equal to what I say. It has nothing to do with her gender. It has nothing to do with that. None. Zero. Now, I don't let that hinder me in this world of a man's world. You know, Jane Brown sang a song. It's a man's world. He ain't here no more. You see my point? And I'm pretty sure if you're married, you speak more, the most private things to your wife more than anybody else. And if you don't, you should. Hmm. So when you draw near to Christ, he draws, he brings you near to each other. So that's Christianity. So I have no problems learning from a woman. Why? Because there's not one. This is the gospel of no difference. This is the gospel of democracy. You see what I'm saying? So Mary, who is my executive secretary, even though biologically she's a woman, she's not. What she is, to me, is my secretary. And we're equal. Now my name may be on the building. That has nothing to do with this. Somebody... The buck's got to stop somewhere. Do you see what I'm saying? So you honor every individual, those that are born again. But you got to remember, there's no way slavery can be abolished because 98% of the world were slaves. William Wilberforce, most people hadn't heard about him. Wouldn't have been for him. Slavery would have, he, he began to, he did what the church should have done 2,000 years ago. He stood up against slavery. He actually made the world think that slavery was wrong. Amen. Because all they thought of that person was a tool of production. You see what I'm saying? And, and he fought it for 30 to 40 years in, in, in England and won. We had to fight a war to stop slavery. Every plantation owner that had slaves knew he, that was a black man or a black woman. But he didn't see them as that. He saw them as tools of production. So in his mind, why well, I say in that environment, I'm just making money. Women, you know how hot it is in August in New Orleans, Louisiana? Had to wear clothes all the way down to their ankles and what they call them thing, corsets? Is that right? So tight that it would actually mess up their in organs. And most women died in their 20s and 30s because somebody thought they ought to look like that. Craziness. Craziness. Insane. Yet, nobody ever thought that it would change. God sent the church to change it. Now, we fought a war in the Civil War. Why are we fighting that war again? I think that's a valid question. Whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Now, we signed the Declaration of Independence on July 4th, 1776, but we had to fight a war. Just because you signed it don't mean it's going to happen. In other words, you have to make that happen. Write this down. There can be no, there cannot be two churches. All believers should be one and their unity must be seen. We can't have a church that says that women shouldn't do this and have a church that says women can do that. There are no two churches. You sound like Rome. Either you are a citizen or you're an enemy. 
If you're not a Greek, you're a barbarian. If you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile dog. And worse than that, you're a woman. That's even worse. Am I making you think? Mm. There cannot be two churches. All believers should be one, and the unity must be seen. People must see that. People see that in me. But just it makes no difference between a woman or a man, or a black man, white man. See, people get mad at me because they want me to. I'm not against. I, I, there, there is none. I'm colored. I just happen to be not white. That's white. This is white. But my skin is colored. Look at it. But you shouldn't look at it. Because it doesn't exist. That's why I treat everybody the same. Because in my mind, there's neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, male or female. We are the body of Christ. The hope of glory. Ooh, glory. So there can be no two churches. All believers should be one, and their unity must be seen. Let me tell you what the devil's doing. Write this down. Divide and destroy is the words of Satan. See, if he can keep us divided, he can destroy us. Divide and destroy are the words of Satan. That's why God gave Paul that revelation. Jew, no Jew, no Greek, no bond, no free, no male, no female. Why? So you could not divide and destroy. But yet, he held it back when he got into the church services, which we still have that problem. Boy, if you want to freak out some churches, go to ordain a woman. Ha! Now, a woman can handle a church in China of 45,000, but she can't pass their church of two in America. And to be totally honest, the greatest work done in Christianity has been done by women. If you go call a prayer meeting, you're going to get two men and 12 women. Shout, ladies, I'm setting you free. <laughs> you see, this was... Now, Paul, but did not implement that. He did it in private circles, but not in the whole circle. See, that's why I'm willing to take the persecution of the world to have the blessing of God in my life. I make no excuse for the blessing of God in my life. I don't care what anybody says about what I have financially. I'll tell you how much I don't care. I don't care. Why? Because it ain't none of your business. Now, I know that's strong. That's why I can live the way I live and be the blessing I want to be. That's why I honor a waitress because I don't think of her as lower or honor a waiter. I don't think of him as lower. I never do that. When I'm with a black man, I don't know he's black. When I'm with a black woman, I don't know she's black. I don't even know if she's a woman. I don't even know if he's a man. I'm not even thinking that way. I'm thinking heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We're family here. Do you see what I'm saying? See, divide and destroy is the words of Satan. I refuse to divide and destroy. You are welcome here. Because you are the body of Christ. Write this down. Errors of judgment. This is how this all began to happen here. Errors of judgment arise out of the corruption of the heart and mind. Let me say it again. Errors of judgment arise out of the corruption of the heart and mind. Why? Why is that? When this Bible explicitly says that. Because we don't subject ourselves to the mind of Christ. That's why the disciples say, why you won't talk to that woman in Samaria? That way? You won't be talking to that crazy woman. No, they want to kill this woman because she's caught in the act of adultery. Well, it takes two to commit adultery. Where's the man? He got a rock in his hand. He said, I'm going to hit her first before she tells my wife. <laughs> and the, Christ, the Jewish world's going to let it happen. That's errors of judgment. That's divide and destroy. Errors of judgment arise out of the corruption of the heart and mind. 
which is the soul of man. Because we don't subject ourselves to the mind of Christ. When Kathy told me she wanted to preach the gospel, I went, you can barely testify. She couldn't say two words without bust out crying, loud crying. <laughs> but that didn't change her. But I, I, I saw it in her. I said, okay. Now, we had David Saul Strand as the first pastor of this church. He's in heaven. Who's the second pastor? Uh, Corey Nakan. Third pastor was Nathaniel Wolf. I guess fourth pastor would be Kenny Day, I, I'm assuming. Or executive pastor. I saw David as just a man of God or a person of God. I saw Corey Nock as, maybe I can help this boy. Couldn't handle it. Don't mean that to be critical, just being truthful. How do I know that? Not the work that he done here, the work that he did there. Just left everybody, just threw them to the dogs. Not being critical, being truthful. Which brought shame. Now some of you people want to come back here, but you're ashamed. I'm not going to point my finger and say you're wrong. Nathaniel Wolf, great guy. But you know what he wanted to be? I can do what Jesse does. No, you can't. No, you can't. Not that I'm better than you. See, God called me to do that. There's a vast difference there. Not that I'm smarter, better, you know, all that craziness. And, and so on and so on. Then Kathy comes. <laughs> Jesse, this vision of covenant church was mine. And, you know, we always sat back and said, you know, which we didn't have to. You know, well, you know, we, we, we're going to prefer other people. She said, I'm going to pastor this church. I didn't say, you can't do that. You're a woman. I said, good. I may see her my wife, but I really see her more as a joint, an heir and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm, not being, I'm naming names here, but I'm not being critical of people. What I'm just saying is, you all know all that stuff. And I, I'm not against anybody whatsoever at all. I, I could care less. You go do what you got to do. You know, I just made it my mind. Jesse hadn't changed. When's the last time you've seen Jesse the planet change? How many of you have been following me for 30 years? Hold your hand up. Have you seen me change? Why? Because there's neither Jew nor Greek. What am I going to change to? A Jew? Am I going to change to a Greek? Am I going to change to a master? Am I a change to a slave? Am I a change to a woman? <laughs> Yo, mama. No. <laughs> that cannot be. How can I change? Now, don't get mad when I say this. How can I change perfection? <laughs> Woo, I'm shaking people up here today. I, that's what you are. That's why you're the seed of Abraham. You're an heir and a joint heir with Christ. He took it above Abraham. Good God, man. He said, when you see me, like Jesus, you see the Father. Well, it's exactly the same way in you. Oh, I'm going to get some ugly letters on that one. Now, I said that. Paul probably would not have said that. Uh, but he grew up in a different world. Not that I'm braver. I mean, I'm not worried that they latch the shoelaces of the Apostle Paul. But I'm saying I grew up in a different world. I grew up with a strong mama. Mama controlled everything and let daddy think he was the boss. And daddy didn't mind it. Or he just didn't know it, one or the other. I don't know. Errors of judgment arise out of the corruption of the heart and mind. Why? Because we don't subject ourselves to the mind of Christ. Now, the reason why I didn't fight Kathy on her being pastor, I subjected myself to the mind of Christ. I don't have corruption in my heart. So I see her when she's here, when she's standing behind this pulpit as the pastor of this church. 
Which brings me to this next point. The heart craves union. And until it finds it, it will not know rest. See, Paul craved union. Jew, no Greek, bond, no free. You know what I mean? Male or female. But he struggled with it all his ministry. Let me say it again. The heart craves union until it finds it. And it, or until it finds it, it will not know rest. But you see, I have done something. I've received the two greatest gifts God's ever given me other than my salvation. One is the peace of God. Amen. And I've entered into the rest. Yes. Now, to run a ministry of this size and magnitude, which takes millions a month, Oh, Jesus, you have no idea how much that light is burning electricity right now. And, and the light don't care. It's just going to burn because this light is going to pay for it. You see what I'm trying to say? Now, I don't go to bed sweating that. You concerned about that? No, I'm at rest in it. When the COVID hit, I didn't say, well, who, who I'm going to lay off. I should have laid off Roy Holton for sure. <laughs> Stand up, Roy. I want people to see Roy. Roy been with me 27 years. 26, 27 years, right? All right, you can sit down, Roy. I just want to make sure he's like, I should have laid off Roy. I should have laid off Joe. I should have laid off Moisey. Why? They rode guys. Travel. Travel. Armor bearers. Armor bearers. We, wouldn't, we didn't go nowhere. That never entered my mind. He didn't enter my mind. Zero. I didn't even allow the word layoff in my mind. Why? Because my mind has been subject to the mind of Christ, which don't have layoff vocabulary in it. Isn't that amazing? Yet, the secular world was saying, uh, let's see, we're going to take these people that... We, since we can't travel and no longer essential, that's not true. Always been essential. How can casinos be essential and churches not? It doesn't really make much sense, does it? See, the heart craves union. And until it finds it, it will not know rest. So I bet it into the rest. If I want to roll roars and you get mad about it, leave. Oh, that made you mad right there, did it? Oh, that ain't walking in love. That's walking in perfect love. See, that's love in its purest form is discipline. Why are you worried about what kind of car I drive? Now, I don't drive a Rolls Royce. I don't have a... But why would you? I'm not worried about what you drive. I drive a pickup truck. I like my truck. Kathy's trying to get me to get rid of my truck. She said, Jesse, you've kept that truck, that vehicle, longer than any other vehicle you have. It's not a new one. It's a 2012. But they don't make it anymore, brother. And it looks like the day I bought it. It doesn't have all the other things that Ricky's truck has. But that's okay, because I can ride in Ricky's truck. <laughs> I just get in the truck all the time and go with him to lunch. That has nothing to do with it. Whoa, 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 why, why you want it? Uh, well, I just do. See, there's neither new truck or old truck. It's a truck that I just happen to enjoy. She says, Kathy goes, I can't put my mascara on this truck. I tell you, I tell you sometimes I'm going to put my makeup on. You know? I said, hang on, I got to cross this overpass. It'll get smooth there in a minute. I don't know why you have this truck. Unless I'm buying her something that's real big, bring the truck. The heart craves union, and until it finds it, it will not know rest. So I've, I've entered into the rest. Oh, God, I do. Now I want to get into this thing. Write this down. Souls have no sexes and no colors of skin. Souls have no sexes and no colors of skin. Zero. They're either male or no female. None. You are an heir and a joint heir. There's no color. So to me, uh, I'm going to get some ugly things on this here, Lord. There are no black people. 
There are no white people. There are no brown people. There are no red people. There are no yellow people. I just gave you five colors. There's only there's five colors of people on the earth. Brown, black, white, red, and yellow. There's only five colors of dirt on the earth. Brown dirt, red dirt, yellow dirt, white dirt, black dirt. You were formed out of dirt. So what are you? Dirt. Why are we fighting over dirt? It just makes no sense. It doesn't exist. It does because actually you are an heir and a joint heir with Jesus. You've been glorified, justified, and sanctified. You can come boldly to the throne of grace with a petition and supplication. Angels got to make appointments. Souls have no sexes and no colors of skin. See, Christianity is not a social program. The church has made it that. It is God's unifying element of the human race. When he made the church, he made the human race. Neither male nor he made us all one. It's a unifying effect or element of the human race. It's not a social program. See, that's why, see, that's why some people say, well, you know, you can't have a woman have that or you can't have a man do that. But they're trying to do a social program. A woman can do anything a man can do and vice versa. You can, if you're willing just to apply yourself. Think about that. Souls have no sexes and no colors of skin. So people get mad at me. Why don't you say that? Because I, I don't know what you're talking about. It's not me that liveth, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh today, I live by the faith of the Son of God. I don't even live by my own faith who loved me and he gave himself for me. Why? So I could be an heir to join heir. So I don't frustrate that grace. Amen. So I have no problem drinking out of the same glass that you drink out of if you are different, quote, color of skin. I'm just thirsty. <laughs> I don't care. I had a black person that used to work for me. He no longer does. I could, I, I, I freaked out. Now you see, because of different cultures, you don't know that until people say things. So I was in the uh, production distribution, and one of the black girls passed by. He said, she got good hair. I said, what did you say? He said, she got good hair. I said, well, what's good hair? His hair, ain't it? He said, oh, no, no, you're not black. You don't understand. I said, good hair. I thought about that. I went to my office. That don't make no sense to me. It's hair. I can understand no hair. Good hair. Well, in his mind, she had good hair. And then he pointed another black person where he said, no, he don't have good hair. I see he got more hair than you. That must be pretty good. But you see how people have formed opinions. Who, what, who, who cares what kind of hair you got? Now, to a, a woman today, you never know what kind of hell a woman got. <laughs> Jesus, man. Man, they'll come to work curly, woo, wild. The next day, straight. I don't know how they do it. It's amazing to me. My God, they'll curl that thing up. I mean... And then the next day, it's, wow. what did you do to get that to happen? Well, I guess they like to do whatever they do. I, I don't know. Kathy says, Jesse, your hair looked like a football helmet. <laughs> you never change your hair. And uh, <laughs> I said, I like football. <laughs> She's been trying to get me to have somebody cut my hair or change my hair. I don't know, that's been going on for, good God, 30, 40 years. <laughs> Pat's wife, Pat. Hey, Pat, lift your hand up. Pat, put your, <laughs> she says, oh, if I could just get to his head. 
I could spike it, make it look. No, 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 no. I'm not saying you can't make it look good, but I like who I am. Oh, but you just need to change it. No, 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 no. You see, you you still in the first century world. A man told me this the other day, you know, you dress well from the top. <laughs> I said, a what? He said, you dress well from the top. He said, now, if you take, see, I can butt my coat. Y'all notice I'm losing weight. But it's about time you said something, for God's sake. All right. You know, if you wore a pair of navy blue slacks, suit, but you wear jeans and boots all the time, that's fine. You didn't see, that didn't shake me at all. Because I think I look good on the bottom too. Yeah. Now, that's just me. That's just me. I like being a cowboy. Yeah, but I mean, it would look so much better. Well, that's your opinion. And maybe it does to 98% of the world. But I'm not in your world. I create my world. Kathy says, you've got some of the finest shoes I've ever seen any man possess. You ought to put that suit on. Why? Because I think you look better. Well, then why don't you wear my shoes? <laughs> wear what you want. No, I'm going to dress the way I want to dress. Well, it's just not respectful in the church. <laughs> oh, you first century Jewish. You see, your environment is motivating you. When Christ in you ought to motivate you. think God cares about my genes? Because if he did, he sure wouldn't have liked John the Baptist. And God said, that's the greatest picture that's ever put in shoe leather right there. Mm. Mm. Christianity is not a social program. It is God unifying element of the human race. I'm going to close with this. Every believer is a temple of the Holy Ghost. Amen. If you destroy that system, you destroy the system God created for the human race. Every believer is a temple of the Holy Ghost. If you destroy that system, you destroy the system God created for the human race. Or like I say, if you say a woman can't do that, because she's a woman, you are destroying that system. Amen. Or a man can't do that because he's a man, you are destroying that. We're temples of the Holy Ghost. Do you think a woman is a lesser temple of the Holy Ghost? Do you think a, 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 a Jew or a Greek is a lesser or a more of a, of a temple of the Holy Ghost? Do you think the master was more or the slave more? No, they said there is no master, there is no. We're all one in Christ. Now, when you begin to understand what I've been preaching here, then you get all these promises that belong to you. Blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed going in, blessed going out. Everything you touch prospers. Favor comes to you. Tenderness comes to you. Discipline comes to you. Love comes to you. Every area of your life. Debt, debt flees from you. Seven, Satan runs from you in seven ways. You don't hate anybody because of the color of their skin because there is no color of skin. There isn't. There's different cultures, but it has nothing to do with skin. I mean, and every once in a while you get an odd one. Charlie Pride, a black man. How could he sing like that? He sang contra. That ain't supposed to come out of a black man's mouth. A black man, doom, Mm -hmm, Lord, Lord. <laughs> but not Charlie Pride. Special. Special. I've tried to see, I've seen, quote, white people try to sing like Aretha. <laughs> or Whitney. And I R-E-S-P-E-C-T. No, 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 no. Boy, that, that woman could say, good God Almighty. 
came from the church. Right. Was well, a credit to her race, if you want to call it. It's a, a talent. Now, I'm going to say something going to make somebody mad. Some black person will get mad at me right now. They said, that gone with the wind movie? It's racist. Yeah. But not in that time. That's just the way they thought. You know why I like going with the wind? Not because of Scarlett O'Hara. I wanted to slap her. <laughs> I've known some girls like Scarlett. <laughs> and I've known some girls like Melanie, who were just sweet. You know why I like that movie? Mammy. Yeah, she won an Oscar. Yes, she did. That blew the socks off the whole world that this black woman was so good in her profession. She drew you into her. And I looked at her. And people said, well, that's a disgrace to the black. Not to her. That was the best craft she, my God, she performed. <laughs> it was amazing to watch the talent because she was special. Amen. Yet she had to fight that black thing. When it should have never been fought. And what I love about, quote, the black race, that when they were being hung, burned, beat, they sang Amazing Grace. And they told their children, you love Jesus all your life. Good Lord, man. That's great power and great strength. I have never, ever looked at a person's color of skin to hire them. I'm going to get, somebody going to get mad at me. But I looked at their qualifications and what were they able to do? You see, so if you come to Jesse the Planet's Ministries, we have women in high positions. We do. Because they're not women. They're employees doing a job that I am well pleased with. Do you see what I'm saying? So I have Pia Fortune, who happens to be the supervisor of the finance department. Watch this. She's German. What's she married a black man for? She don't know he's black. She just sees Ron and sees love. That's it. And if you get around Ron and Pia, you don't even know the difference. I mean, you just enjoy it. You got Wendy Olivier. She's the financial director. She's a woman. People that are ahead of HR, I call a pretty girl. I still don't know her name. <laughs> and I learned all that different colored hair stuff by her, because she'll come in, I'll tell you where they tight, look like a sponge. <laughs> tight. Then the next day, hmm, just as smooth as, who knows? Holds that a position. If you just look around my ministry, uh, the head of partner care, Jessica uh, Malave, woman. Assistant pastor, Betty Garrison. Where's the men in here? Well, we got George. Where's George at? That George. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yet his sister-in-law works two desks down. Chrissy, she just comes up with ideas. We listen. Executive secretary, Christine. Bartley. Executive Secretary, Mary Houghton. See, I couldn't fit in the first century world because I, I walk like Jesus walks. I don't even consider them women. I consider them great people doing this job. Amen. Stephanie, Executive Secretary to Richard Bartley. Quita, is Quita in here? Quita, executive secretary, black woman. Oh, 
executive secretary to Martin Ayton. So we got Martin Ayton as a director, George as the director, Ricky as a director. Now the boss of all of them is a woman, yeah. Kathy. And they respect her. In fact, they do things for her they don't even do for me. <laughs> they say, Jesse don't know what he's talking about. Go ask Kathy. <laughs> Till I get mad, then they go, Kathy said. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I wouldn't fit. in the world that the Bible wrote in. And yet the church has tried to conform me all these years to this and I will not. Why? Because there's neither Jew nor Greek. Slave nor free. Male nor female. For we all one in Christ Jesus. So I'm not a friend to the poor man, nor to the rich man. I'm a friend to mankind Amen. because of the son of man. That's why Jesus called himself the son of man. Even though he was the son of God, he was as much God as he was man. And he, so I study Jesus' life. Say, I want to walk like him. Now, I, I want to walk like the apostle Paul too. But I mean, a lot of, you just take the heat. I had a stand, almost a stand, well, I did have a standing ovation there at the Southern Believers Convention when I told, looked at the camera and I told people that the government's job is not to protect my life. The government's job is to protect my rights. I protect my life. If I want to go into an infectious disease place that I might die of so I can go pray for people, that is my business. I choose. Death and life is in the power of my tongue, not theirs. Now, you protect my rights. That's what you do. Not in a controlling way, but in a constitutional way. Amen. You see, so now you're going to look at each other totally different. You're going to look at each other and go, who are you? I'm an heir and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. And when you understand that, you can receive from anyone, male or female, because there's none in God. Did you enjoy it this morning? Yeah.